This is Antarctica, located right at the south pole of the Earth, where the average temperature can drop to minus 57 degrees Celsius. Due to this, the entire continent is covered with several kilometers thick sheets of ice, and cold winds blowing at speeds ranging from 80 to 300 kilometers per hour are a constant presence. But can you survive in such a place? Well, this question is important because 650 million years ago, not just Antarctica, but every continent on Earth was as cold as Antarctica. The average temperature of the Earth was so low that all the seas and rivers on Earth were frozen, and there was no water source left unfrozen on the planet. This event was named Snowball Earth by scientists. But what exactly happened on Earth at that time that turned it from a blue planet into a snowball Earth? And how did we come to know about this event? So, hello guys, you are watching Brain Bargain, and let's start new episode. On 2nd December, 1911, a large ship named S.Y. Aurora arrived at Cape Denison on the coast of Antarctica. It carried many famous explorers from around the world who came to map Antarctica. One of them was Douglas Mawson, an Australian geologist, who had come to explore the V-shaped regions of Antarctica called King George V Land and Adelie Land. These were two unexplored regions of Antarctica in the 90s, where no one knew what was hidden or how dangerous it was, as no one had ever explored these parts of Antarctica before. Douglas formed a team of three people for Antarctic exploration, teaming up with Xavier Mertz and Belgrave Ninnis, and started their exploration with some ice sleds, food supplies, and a few dogs to pull the sleds. However, they never imagined that this exploration would become the most dangerous mission of their lives, and for two of the explorers, it would be their last. On November 10, 1912, Douglas and his companions started their journey towards King George V Land. They spent five weeks mapping King George V Land amidst Antarctica's bone-chilling cold winds blowing at speeds of 80 to 320 kilometers per hour. Everything was going according to plan, and everyone was happy. But then something strange happened. As they were moving forward on their sleds with their dogs, a huge layer of ice broke beneath them due to the weight, opening up an almost 50-meter deep crevasse which is a deep crack in a glacier. Before they could react, one of the explorers, Belgrave Ninnis, fell straight into the crevasse with his sled and the dogs tied to it. Everything happened so fast that Douglas and Mertz couldn't comprehend what had just happened. When they tried to look down the 50-meter deep crevasse to find Ninnis, they saw nothing, as if Ninnis had vanished upon falling into the glacier. Both were terrified by this incident and decided to abandon the exploration and return unaware that the journey back would be even more difficult and deadly. By this time, Douglas and Xavier were 100 kilometers away from their base camp. Moreover, they had very little food left because the food and all the tent supplies had fallen into the glacier with Ninnis. Therefore, after a few days of journeying through this icy and lifeless terrain, they ran out of food and began suffering from hunger and cold. With no other option, they started killing and eating their own sled dogs one by one. Their food supply was so limited that they even ground the bones of the dogs, boiled them in water, and drank it. After a few days of travel, the lack of food and extreme cold had deteriorated their condition so much that their bodies had turned pale, their hair had fallen out, and their nails had started breaking off. But their troubles didn't end there. Another strange incident occurred. Suddenly, Xavier Mertz began behaving erratically, biting his own hands and feet, even breaking and eating his fingers. Seeing Xavier's condition, Douglas was extremely frightened. A scuffle broke out between them, and later Xavier refused to continue the journey back with Douglas, as if he had given up entirely on the journey. Xavier crawled into his sleeping bag and, despite Douglas's repeated calls, did not come out. Douglas stayed by his side for some time and saw that shortly after, Xavier went into a coma and passed away on January 8, 1913. Despite this, Douglas did not lose hope and completed the 160-kilometer journey back to camp alone, overcoming every obstacle. However, Douglas's bad luck didn't end there. When he reached the base camp, the ship S.Y. Aurora had left for Australia just a few hours earlier. Now, Douglas had no way to leave this icy world and return. Reluctantly, he had to spend another year in this icy Antarctica, and the next year, in December 1913, he returned to Australia on a ship that arrived in Antarctica. After returning from Antarctica, 
Douglas started working as a geology professor at the University of Adelaide. During this time, he also conducted deep studies on the geography of Australia. However, he didn't know that the experience of surviving in Antarctica would lead him to a major discovery. While researching Australia's geological data, he found a thick glacial sediment layer in the Neoproterozoic era rocks, dating from 1 billion to 538 million years ago, which mostly form in environments like Antarctica and Greenland that have been frozen for millions of years. Finding such ancient glacier sediments in warm regions like Australia led Douglas to conclude that just as Antarctica and Greenland are covered with thick sheets of ice today, the entire Earth might have been covered with a thick sheet of ice 650 million years ago. If Douglas's theory was correct, his research pointed to a global glaciation period during which not just the poles but all the continents, rivers, and even oceans of Earth were entirely frozen. However, for such a grand claim, more proof was needed, especially sedimentary evidence found not just in Australia but in various parts of the world. So, do we have any such evidence? Well, to uncover the reality of this theory, scientists around the world have examined the layers formed during the Neoproterozoic era over time. In 2007, they discovered a significant layer that almost proved Douglas's global glaciation theory. This layer was called diamictites. Many pieces of evidence of global glaciation, which started around 650 million years ago, are found in the diamictite layers of the Neoproterozoic era across different continents. For example, as seen in these pictures, a massive stone is deeply embedded in this rocky layer far below the ground, as if this layer was once mud. This type of formation is called a drop stone, which is mostly found in marine sediments, meaning under the sea. The presence of such layers globally at the same time indicates global glaciation. When the entire Earth was covered in ice and as the Earth warmed over time, the ice began to melt gradually. The massive stones on the ice slowly sank beneath it, embedding deeply into the now wet layer due to the melting water. Another piece of evidence was the varves, which are a specific type of sediment layer pattern. As seen in these pictures, their formation typically occurs when glacial water melts and moves beneath the glaciers at higher temperatures. The third piece of evidence was glacial striations. These patterns are found near rivers or icy regions of the Earth's poles, usually forming due to continuous water flow. Finding these striations in the layers of the Neoproterozoic era proves that the ice from the poles extended to the equator. Later, as the Earth warmed and the glaciers melted, they created these patterns. As the name suggests, global glaciation was a period when our Earth looked like this from space, completely frozen and appearing as a white ball. The most important aspect of this time is that if we looked at the Earth from space, we wouldn't even notice that it was rotating on its axis. The continents and oceans all blended into one white color, making it look like a big snowball. Viewing this lifeless white Earth from 650 million years ago, it might not seem like there could be any life here. However, just as there is speculation about life existing beneath the frozen surfaces of Saturn and Jupiter's moons like Europa, Scientists also believe that beneath the frozen oceans of this ice-covered Earth, there might have been bacterial single-celled and multicellular life. Yes, the same life that, after the ice melted, evolved into all other animals on Earth, including us humans. Now, the final question that arises is, why exactly did this snowball Earth effect happen? What caused the entire Earth to turn into a snowball? What triggered such a massive glaciation period? Well, the answer to this question is still not clear. The exact cause of this extreme event that froze the entire Earth is still unknown, but several scientists have different theories. The first theory suggests that when the process of the supercontinent breaking apart began on Earth about 700 million years ago, many gases like sulfur dioxide were released from the Earth's crust. When these gases reached high altitudes in the atmosphere, they significantly blocked and reflected incoming sunlight causing the Earth's temperature to drop drastically, leading to an endless snowfall that lasted a long time, resulting in the snowball Earth. According to the second theory, the release of sulfur dioxide and other sunlight reflective gases into the atmosphere was not due to continental drift, but rather due to massive volcanic eruptions that occurred in what is now Canada around 770 to 790 million years ago. These eruptions pumped so much gas and dust into the atmosphere that the Earth was shrouded in darkness for a long time, 
leading to a significant drop in temperature and eventually a long snowfall, causing the entire Earth, including the oceans, to freeze. Well, the video isn't over yet. There's a third theory, which is the most interesting one. According to this theory, the freezing of Earth into a snowball is a cyclic event known as the Milankovitch Cycles. This theory suggests that the Earth's atmosphere depends heavily on two factors. The Earth's rotation on its axis and, most importantly, the Earth's orbit around the Sun. As we know, the Earth orbits between the closest point to the Sun, called perihelion, and the farthest point, aphelion, causing seasonal changes. According to astronomer Milutin Milankovic, every 100,000 years, the Earth goes through a cycle in which, due to the gravitational effects of objects in the solar system like Saturn and Jupiter, the Earth reaches its farthest point from the Sun. According to Milankovic, this is the time when the Earth becomes extremely cold, and an ice age begins, an ice age in which every continent, ocean, and water source on Earth freezes entirely. During this period, the blue Earth turns into a white ball. As the Earth begins to move closer to the Sun again over the next 100,000 years, these ice sheets and glaciers melt back into the oceans. Although it is still unclear which of these events turned Earth into a snowball Earth 650 million years ago, if it is a cycle, as suggested astronomically, it will undoubtedly repeat on Earth again. So, guys, I want to know if we humans are prepared for such an extreme ice age. Please write your answers in the comments section below. If you liked it, don't hesitate to like it and share it with your friends so that we get motivated to make more interesting videos for you.